immediately, the planet's erratic magnetic field forces emergency update to global navigation systems. Well, what does that mean? That means if you want to get to where you're going, you better know where magnetic north is. Well, it's moving, and it's moving fast. So what does that mean? Let's talk about what they say. Earth's magnetic north pole is veering towards Siberia at an incredibly fast rate. Experts are not sure why. The erratic movement has forced the scientists tasked with monitoring the planet's magnetic field to update their system that underlies global navigation from Google Maps to shipping. So you want to get to where you're going, you better know magnetically a source on the Earth, and it is moving, and they can't get to change it because the government shut down. Can you believe this? Because they have to update it, and, they, and, and they're way ahead of schedule to update it years. Now, as liquid iron, this is where it's all wrong. They, they, here's the problem. They are never, ever, ever, ever going to get around this until, figure this out, until they start to understand that there is ether out there. I can explain every single magnetic interaction, every single electrical interaction, every single anomaly that they have no clue about. Biggest mystery in history why the corona of the sun is so hot. Biggest mystery in history why Venus is so hot and it, it spins backwards and it has no magnetic field. It has no moons. Why? Why all these feet? I can explain every one of them. It's because of the ether that we are scrubbing through. Now, I'm going to explain it to you in, because this is all nonsense after this. Well, actually, just look at this. It says, they're saying that liquid iron is shifting around, swirling around. They have no idea about that. Scientists must per periodically update the world magnetic model because it, it's going to change. Every no This is fully understood. I understand it quite well. In the most recent version, was produced in 2015, was intended to last till 2020. Well, it's not. It's so wrong now that it's already bad. However, the magnetic field has been changing so quickly and erratically. It was conducting a routine check in 2018. They realized as drastic steps were needed. They have to fix it because everything's going crazy. The shift they observed was so large it was on the verge of exceeding acceptable limit of navigational errors. All right, so anyway, we know this, and now let's go back to seeing reality. All right, I've shown this over and over, but I'm going to go over it again. I'm going to keep going over it until somebody takes heed of this and starts to listen and responds. Once they respond and they say, I'm crazy or I'm right, then we'll go forward. I'm saying electron flood theory is the way things are. Elf theory, electron flood. The whole universe is flooded with electrons from emitting bodies which are luminescent bodies, which is stars and suns and all this business, and they are uh, they're dipoles. All light are negative. They're, they're negative, but they're dipoles. So they have positive and negative, but they're net negative. We call them electrons. And they sit in the orbits around every single atom, around every single molecule. That means every single bit of matter there is. Every single thing there is, is painted with electrons. There is nothing that is positive on its surface. This is critical that you understand this, because every particle in this room, in this air, every particle is negative on its surface. So anything that's moving through it is moving through a mass of negative particles that are going to oppose it because it is also negative because there is nothing that is not negative on its surface and if I am right about light which I am it is also an electron so it is the same thing as what is on the surface of every single thing there is and every single molecule that you do not see that is in atmosphere now, in the vacuum of space, they call it, there's still all these particles are out there. They're just not banging into each other because there is no mass that is complete to smash into. So they stay away from each other. They're all negative. Prim they're net negative. Now, some light transits space and it's dark. It's dark matter. It's dark, it's dark, dark energy and dark matter. It, it, it's there. It has a mass. When it smashes into something, it glows and it lights. We know that. It hits us. It's just so obvious. Now, as this light hits molecules, it glows. It all is negative on the surfaces. It bangs into it and they fight. And I'm going to show you in my light experiments. Now, all light creates energy. That's what's creating energy. Anything that, and well, light, I'm talking I'm in the electronic realm. 
also there is proton energy that smashes and zinc. Same things, but there is nothing that is not combust, com, you know, concussion. It's not. It's all smashing into something. So all light is energy, and it's heat, and it's glowing, and it's sound, and it's all happens on impact. Every single one of those things. Some impacts are stronger than others. They glow stronger. That's all. They, and then was they glow with this heat and all that shaking from bouncing around the electrons. Some electrons just hang out in the air. We call it static electricity. You walk through it, it collects on your body. You sit down, you scrub it, and, the, you're, and, and it collects on you, and then it jumps from you to the ground. That is static electricity, just hanging around. Those are electrons. They c cling to the water molecules primarily that are in the air. They just hang around with them and they say, well, wherever you guys go, I'll go with you until I find somebody that wants me more than you do, and then it jumps to you. No, or to ground or whatever it does. No. What else is a free electron? It's an ionosphere. It's hanging all around the Earth, everywhere around the Earth. It's a, it's a, a shell surrounding the entire Earth. So it's all... They, they say it's all oh, it's positive energy and it's not. No, it's not. It's negative. It's all negative p particles out there, primarily. Now, because the positives will not stay. Electron flood says that if there's any positive, it's going to be so flooded with electrons so quickly that it's not ever going to be perceptible, uh, it, uh, except for in an atomic bomb, because there you crush everything into the core, and now all you have, and it all goes, whoosh, all that light goes. That's all your electrons. What you're left with is a, is a mass of positiveness, and that goes straight up from the Earth because it's positive, pushes away. The Earth is positive, always will suck down electrons. So the Earth is always positive. Once the electrons go away from the atomic bomb, it goes straight up in the air, and it pulls all of its electrons, well, pulls out everything and get back into itself, the mushroom cloud. That's reconstituting the matter. And I think they understand this. They just said nobody's ever put it together in it you know, a rational, understandable way. Now, there's something else they fully don't understand. Some electrons hang out as static, ionosphere, and these free electrons are ether. They're all ether. We're going to call all free electrons ether. And all free electrons do is what free electrons do. They move freely. Now, Earth is literally a motor, and it is a, well, here, sorry, here. Our planet is coated with magnetic stripes oriented in the ocean expanse trenches. People don't even take this into consideration. I did a video on this, I'm going to show it to you years ago. It shows that that is the source of our magnetic field. As our, mag, as our planet spins through the ether of space, which is all magnetic particles, and we're being ripped through it, through the Milky Way, and we're spinning at the same time, and the spinning magnetic stripes are nothing more than a motor. It's nothing more than a commutator of a motor spinning through the magnetic field, and it it <laughs> generates a field around itself, just exactly like a motor generator does. So, Earth is literally a motor generator as a commutator, which is Earth spins through the negative soup of space. That's what creates our magnetic field. Now, why is it getting so crazy? And why is it moving? The, the, what we're hitting into is moving, not us. It's what hit, we're hitting into is moving, which is changing the impact area of, of negative to negative, which is moving our magnetic field. Now, I'm going to explain it. I, hopefully, that makes sense to you because that's, it's, it's very, very, very simple. Now I'm going to show you what happens in space and show you pictures of the galaxies and all this. So, flat earthers, please, just don't bother this. Please, don't give me thumbs down. This is, this is serious stuff. we got problems here, so don't start attacking me for this. This is our solar system being pulled through the galaxy. Now, I want to make one other statement about flat earth people. You know, everybody's, oh, just leave them alone, oh, well, let them say what they want, who cares about them? Well, let me tell you something, I had to stop, I had to shut down several sites because of this, and I had to stop taking friends because of this for, it's got to be well over a year now, and I'm sorry if you're ever trying to friend me and you're, you're, you're not just trying to assault me, but I had so many people assault me, I just don't even bother looking at the friends anymore, so I'm sorry about it if you've been trying to get a hold of me, because I'm not going to take friends. And, and, and it's all because of this kind of nonsense. And I know what's going to happen now. Already I know what's going to happen. It pisses me off, I've got to be honest with you. Now, 
this is going through space they're all spinning through space and there's the sun now the sun is also I'm sure making this right hand spin I don't think anyone knows if it does or not but because all they can see is the boiling of the surface of the sun and the extreme heat of the corona so what do I mean by that the sun let's say the sun is moving through here spinning just like everything here is spinning and the planets are spinning you see what's rubbing off the side of the sun it's making a right hand spin as it goes this way so it's scrubbing against the molecules in space which are the ether that I'm talking about the negative molecules they're ripping negatives away from the sun is my thinking and as they do they're glowing and heating and heating the hell out of the corona and creating ex enormous magnetic fluctuation fields and because it's scrubbing through the particles negative to negative exactly identical to doing this exactly identical negative to negative that is negative to negative no difference whatsoever a little different situation but it's no difference is negative to negative the entire heat of the corona is so intense millions of degrees and the surface is 6,000 degrees why the scrubbing of the corona the heat of negative to negative at the impact boundary creates that enormous heat of the corona down at the surface only 6,000 degrees up at the outer surface uh, uh, outer corona where it impacts with space which is the negative soup of space it's millions of degrees there is no other reason and they have no other explanation for it. the biggest mystery in history they say now that is solved by ether secondly the spinning of all the planets is in a right hand rule they're all spinning in the right hand rule now some take longer to spin some take slower you see how long some take they all sort of trail the the big mass of the sun however venus spins backwards not this way spinning backwards but in its rotation in its daily spin and it takes a long time to spin and as because it's spinning backwards instead of making a right hand spin it's forcing itself in the wrong orientation in an unslippery orientation against the negatives backwards they should they're supposed to bounce off them in the right hand rule and slide off them they don't in going left hand rule which it is it is fighting them and they are heating up and venus is about the size of the earth and not much of a difference it's a little closer to the sun but is not there's no way to account for its heat other than the fact that it's heating up because of this crushing against opposing the ether now what else would that do it also creates a situation you don't have a magnetic field like the rest of the planets the magnetic field does not get created correctly all right all the rest of the planets have magnetic fields that are created according to the right hand rule and venus does not now it also creates these enormous auroras and temperature shifts at the poles because it's sucking electrons out of there in copious quantities creating negative 200 degree temperatures at the poles and like 850 degrees at its equator where it's smashing in and the pole because of that negative to negative backwards ripping it's throwing electrons into space and when it does that throwing electrons away is nothing more than creating cold when you take electrons out of mass it is a cold situation the more you take the colder it gets and the colder it gets eventually that it will levitate because there's not enough negative particles to keep it on earth it becomes positive that's why when you take these these levitating little things that they put these little, little levitating ceramic magnets and so forth and then you see them add liquid nitrogen and then all of a sudden boop, it pops right up at an exact temperature and that means at that exact temperature there's exactly enough electrons being pulled away from that mass to make it anti-gravity 
pops right up in the air at a distance away from the earth and you could bump, 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 and it'll, it'll do that and it'll float around like this everybody's seen it and it will not happen until it hits that temperature when it hits that temperature it's spontaneous bip, pops right up i think there's no question whatsoever that what i'm showing accounts for all of these different interactions they have no you know oh, it does this it does that well no they have no clue because they're trying to account for something that there's there's nothing in space nothing at all we're just oh we're floating around here in, in nothingness well that's just nonsense we are going through the light of all of the things that's given off in the universe and now i believe we are approaching the galaxy and i'm going to show you we're coming in we create a, a well let me show you the galaxy and then we'll talk about that at this for a long time before I figured it out, but I think I have figured it out. As the galaxy swirls around the denseness of the, the galactic core, which I believe probably is a black hole, or at least it is such a compacted amount of mass that there is so much pull that everything is trying to get to it, and the natural intention of everything is to spin to the right. So that means this thing is going in that direction. Right? The right-hand spin is always looking from the back of the traveling particle. So the north pole is always that direction. Right? So it's spinning this way. Here's what you have to look at. The angular momentum is not just a complete total always swirl. It's not. You see this? That's an arm. That's an arm. That's an arm. This is an arm. You see what this arm is doing? It's impacting that arm. This arm is impacted. It's impacting this arm. It's impacting this arm. It's impact as it swirls around. They they don't make a complete just nice. Everybody's in their own little path. No, they come into denseness here and there. That's what's going to happen. So it depends on where you are. You may come through a space. There's just nothing there. Oh, this is just wonderful. All of a sudden, the next day you wake up and you're starting to get into space that is dense enough to create enough resistance that the whole mass of your planet starts to heat up first. Secondly, it will push the magnetic pole in a different manner. That's what I believe is happening. Nature of light. Go to this video. Today on the I'm going to turn it off the sound. It shows the right hand spin of light. It shows all of the particles of light. I talk about the Fraunhofer lines, the rule of eight, all the reasons for this eight. And I believe they're, well, you watch it. If you want to watch it, watch it. This is the vibrations and the resonance frequencies that creates the rule of eight, as you will see these patterns emerging at exact resonance frequencies. I show light particles the actual particle and explain the right hand rule makes it spin to the right and then come all the way around into the right and come backwards spin still spin to the right so there's no energy comes around spins to the right in the correct direction going down this time spins to the right coming backwards no energy that's what gives you the energy no energy and the spikes coming off now and i explain all these things this shows the particle nature and the ability to accelerate light and these are the particles and how the ether glows I show that and I show all deeply you know the whole thing and then I show how the torus works and as I just explained it it, it, it accounts for the way the right hand spin it goes around and around and around down inside it stays going right but it's going backwards this time and it goes out and around and around and it goes this time back in again the right hand rule this time it's going upwards so it's okay it stays right hand rule was going backwards so it's back I got these things in the wrong positions this should be black and black and that should be white and white but once it comes back out of there still going in the right hand rule but going backwards it comes out going this way and now it's going in the right hand rule going in the direct correct direction but when it backs off going in the right hand way it, it, it ends up coming out of here and back and forth and back and forth all the way around a circle. All right, so I explain all these things in this, you know, my fingers going around and around, okay, and then I show the actual particles in green and red and all that stuff. So this is not something that uh, I don't have any support for, so come up and watch that.